Dan se get the dumbest got the now on a sky key to got Kim Kimberly Halker and this thing awesome. Um, oh my smudge guy don't work. Bucket, bucket, no say, bucket, no say win. Be, be, can this win? Okay, be, can this win? Smudge, it means cleansing. And then we're going to go into um, the four sacred medicines that they're called. So we have. Um, cedar, sage, tobacco, sweetgrass. So I'm gonna go through them one at a time, very slowly, as I was taught and seen, and then the knowledge that was given to me. So we're gonna start from tobacco. So tobacco is um, is one of the first sacred medicines to begin to begin with, it was given to the people as a way to connect to the spirit, spirit world. And so tobacco was the very first plant also that the indig uh, indigenous people back then grew on the land. It, it, used, it is used in offering for everything and every ceremony. Um, so as in prayers, I uh, visit to sacred grounds, especially and this is also a special uh, medicine gift to an elder for counseling. So whenever you need to, um, what is called that you walk the, the red path or you're following your traditions of indigenous person and to go to get knowledge from an elder, you always present them with tobacco, always. And tobacco was, is also used in if uh, a pipe carrier, a pipe holder, uh, they smoke it in the pipe and it's believed to carry and when they blow the smoke, it's for healing. So they see that in the ceremony. So I'm gonna um, um, show you step by step how we use a tobacco. But tobacco in Cree, we say sistamun, sistamun, sistamun. Sistamun, tobacco. So sistas, sistamun, uma sistamun, kichisti gayan. You're gonna put it in your left hand. So the reason why I believe you're putting it in your left hand, it's in your side of your heart. So when you have the tobacco in your hand, you do your prayer. You you pray to Gisimanitu, the great creator. And then when you have that tobacco in your hand, you tell the medicine what you want and it will and how it's going to be used. And then you're going to lay your tobacco down or you could put it in a uh, smudge bowl. So either you um, put it down or smudge it to, to burn. To burn. So with tobacco also, if you take something from the land, you have to lay tobacco down because you have taken something that you needed and you have to have to have that exchange of thanking the creator. Oh, today I've killed a moose and you put it down and do your prayer <clears throat> that you're thank that you're thankful. When doing using the medicine ready, take it back on the land, offer tobacco to give thanks. Okay? And um, so and then offer tobacco into the fire. It offers um, and tobacco is also used to in feast ceremony. And after you do your um, the feast or ceremony, you have your tobacco. The, this is um, part of the teachings of um, spirit plate. So the spirit plate consists of food that you, um, for the ancestors. So once you put that plate down and then you put your tobacco around it and it's just uh, a way of giving back. This is our teachings of tobacco. So what I'm gonna do is I'm um, gonna say a prayer in Cree and, and um, ask for, um, for prayer because um, <clears throat> there's um, with the, all the all the other medicines have 
different ways of keeping you balanced, keeping you harmony, and keeps you calm, it gives you a good mood. Um, there is like being a, uh, a squail nowadays, this medicine really helps, okay? So here we go. So I'm gonna go like this, and I'm gonna acknowledge the four directions first, and then I'll go into my prayer in Cree, okay? Kistimanitu kinanaskomitan anoskagisigak. So when menan gamino bematisinak. Wichihanan tato kagisigak. Mina ininisawin. Aga beno machuwin. Ego se. Hi, hi. So with the prayer pre word, Cree um, prayer, um, I just said. I've asked uh, great, great spirit to, um, I added you guys with my prayer. I try not to be selfish. I always try to put everybody else around me. So this way, um, um, we work together as harmony. And there's our balance. And in my prayer, I've included everybody. Okay. So my prayer goes, great spirit, we thank you today. Bless us to have a good life. Help us every day, give us knowledge and good health. Thank you. Ego step. So I'm gonna put that down in our smudge bowl. So when you have a smudge bowl, like I have this um, solid rock bowl, and then they have the the shell. It's called so that's used as a sponge uh, smudge smudge bowl too. Um, before I go on. I want to emphasize more on the the words of thank you because you're going to be hearing a lot of the, a longer way of saying thank you in the Cree language and a lot you're going to hear this a lot with the elders um, saying it. So we're going to take this word egose. So egose is saying okay, uh, um, it's done kind of kind of way. Okay, egose. Okay, and it's done. And then we have ekosane. Ekosane. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And then so I'm gonna go into the 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 word that's used as in I am thankful and grateful. Okay. So in my prayer, I said, So I'm saying, we thank you, the nan is the we. So as in me, I am thankful, I say, So, egose, like I just said at the end of my prayer, that okay, I'm done. Egosane, thank you. And then, like I said, elders, and to be more grateful, to add that you're very thankful and grateful, they say, kinanaskamitin. Kinanaskamitin, kinanaskamitin. That's coming from me to you. And with my prayer, I put kinanaskamitin. Denan. So we're thanking you. We thank you. Okay. All right. So the next uh, sacred medicine, I'm going to talk about sweet grass. Sweet grass in Cree, we gaskosia. We gaskosia. So grass in my mind is maskosi. So you could hear that towards the end, maskosi. So wa, we gaskosia. Okay. So sweet grass. Right away, you notice that it's braided. The reason why it's braided, it symbolizes um, the braiding of the sweet grass in itself honors the teachings of interconnection between 
mind, body, and spirit. Okay, mind, body, and spirit. And it also uh, symbolizes healing and peace, smudge at home, at work, and ceremonies. Uh, combined with prayer, smudging brings us closer to the Creator. The smoke purifies and protects our body, spirits, and living spaces. So, um, and smudging also uh, takes the negative energy. Okay, so when um, when smudging, you're gonna take the end that's not tied up, as you can see, and you're gonna use matches as possibly as you can, and um, don't blow on it. That's one of the other teachings that I was told, do not blow on it. So once um, it burns, the smoke comes up, and then you can do mind, body, and soul. So I'm gonna emphasize more on the smudging of why we say mind, body, and soul. And the other thing um, we're given is an eagle feather. So an eagle feather is also used to to uh, sway the smoke towards yourself or the person that you're helping to smudge, okay? So when you smudge, um, so mind, so mind, so let's, let's do, go like this. So we cleanse our mind to think only the good of others and to think of all the Creator has given us. Uh, cleanse our eyes. Okay, so when we cleanse our eyes, I believe that we are smudging our eyes to see good things and to see good things in others. And also, most importantly, to see good in yourself. Sometimes we always forget to take care of ourselves. Okay, so. And to cleanse your mouth, it, um, to speak truthfully and to say good words. And smudging really gives you that um, um, the, the confidence of the, the, the I don't want to say the right words, but the, the, the words that you need in that day of, of your day of living the day. Just have good words of that day coming out. Uh, so we, we also uh, smudge our ears so we could hear good things and not hear the bad things. Okay, and cleansing our heart, very important because a lot of our feelings come from our heart and that's why we offer tobacco from our left side. Okay, so everything, is, our heart takes a lot. Um, so we have to be good and kind and gentle and love to everyone. Body, okay, your body takes a lot of toll. So you're cleansing your body to free and clean and get rid of um, the tiredness, the soreness, the, the, the hustle and bustle, bustle of who you are of that day. So cleanse your body. Okay? Ask to cleanse your body like this. And the most important is as uh, we walk on the earth and we walk on Mother Earth every day. And so you cleanse your legs and feet to walk a good path and to follow uh, kindness and truth given by the Creator. And uh, so we have covered on uh, the prayer part. So I'll start from, from, my, um, um, from my eyes. So, um, uh, so I'll pray, um, um, smudge my eyes today to see good things, smudge my mouth to say good, good things, uh, smudge my heart to feel good things, smudge my body to feel good things, um, smudge my feet and legs to walk on Mother Earth to be proud of who I am today. Egosane. All right, so our next sacred medicine is sage, sage, in the Cree language, in the Nemo wind, we say masagis, masagis, masagis. So there's two different um, sage, how it's bundled. We have the hard sage and the soft sage. So the hard sage is right here. This is an, a bundle that's could use to burn 
and you smudge your home. Okay, go all over, even smudge your doorways, the front, the back, um, your kids' rooms, the living room. So this is used in smudging of your home and you can also use it like and when you burn you can go like this. This is the heart, how it looks. And then you have your soft sage, very soft. As you can see, it falls off very uh, delicately. Delicli and so when you burn it, when you start to smudge it, you're going to take a handful and then you're going to roll it into a ball. And I will um, do a little bit of it. I'm going to break it up and show you how to smudge it. And I'm sorry, forgive me, I know that I said that we're not supposed to use lighters. Um, so it's going to demonstrate the burn, how it should look. So right away, see that the smoke purifies. Take your feather, get that ready. And if the other thing too, um, is if you have glasses, because you're going to smudge them and, and you're asking to see and see good things. And if you have any jewelry, um, it's best to take those off. And anything that's um, special to you, as significates you, like um, your rings, your wedding rings, you take those off, get them blessed too, put them on. And then we go mind, body, and soul. doing that like I said you ask for those things of seeing good things feeling good things your body your, your legs your feet and say your prayer what you're asking for that day okay. so just hope that the fire alarm doesn't go off <laughs> that's gonna cover it okay okay all right so sage um, must Masagis, masagis. Uh, sage is a woman's medicine. It's sometimes referred to as a woman's medicine as it's used in moon ceremonies. Um, burn the sage in a bowl like we just did. And when smudging, it improves the mood, elevates the stress and insomnia when you have a hard time sleeping maybe. That's why a lot of, uh, when you have a hard time sleeping, you have a lot in your mind going. So when you smudge this, it should elevate for you to, um, to come in the place of calmness and, and it repels the negative energy. So I've showed you how to smudge. I showed you how to pray and what to say and be in that moment of asking the creator for those to improve, uh, ask for, um, to have positive energy. Thank you, sir. So the next sacred medicine, cedar. So in the Cree language, we say osawanask. Osawanask, osawanask, cedar. Cedar can be used in different ways. You could be, uh, you could use brewing to tea, or cedar bath, or smudging. So same way when you smudge uh, the sage and sweet grass, um, you you burn it and you do the, the same way as smudging. Uh, but cedar is a medicine to drink when to treat people who are sick, and it really helps when you have a cold or you just feel. There's moments where you just feel blah, and you need medicine inside you instead of taking Tylenol and Advil you know go to your natural medicine because it's there for you so when you go pick up cedar make sure you give back take that tobacco because you're taking a plant away and you need to offer it back to say thank you to the creator creator for giving you cedar today to help you heal and drink 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 the medicine 
And for cedar, um, uh, it can be used in tea, right? So vitamin C uh, our benefits are bath. So a bath too, uh, for, for especially the women, the cedar, uh, you boil it and you put in your bath to cleanse more because as for women, we do go through our moon time, okay? And um, this also, it contracts positive energy and balance. So with cedar, how do you prepare cedar? and to drink. So collect your cedar branches, but following traditional protocols, meaning, like I said, you offer back tobacco on the ground that you've picked it out. And so the measurements I got is uh, you place two cups of fresh cedar into a large pot of um, eight cups of water and bring the cedar to boil. Keep boiling for about 10 minutes until golden and smell the Ramon, Ramon the smell, um, throughout your house <laughs> and also when while it's boiling you know you could go there and it's that freshness at the beginning once it starts boiling and you smell it, it's like take take it in take take calming brief breaths with the steam and after you're done um, like i said you could take that and you could have a bath with it uh, once boiled remove it from it and let it cool so, and then you're going to strain it and put it in another container. So once you strain it and you have it in the king container, it's warm enough to um, drink and add a little bit of honey just to make it a little bit sweet. And the best way to drink it is when it's warm. And so that's your cedar content. Thank you, herbal remedies. So these herbal remedies are pretty much maybe outside of your backyard that um, plants, um, as we know, a long, long time ago, we never had like Tylenol or Advil and our herbs and plants are very rich off the land of Mother Earth, Kitaskino, Mother Earth, okay? So uh, my first um, teaching that I received and learned to use is called the red willow crystals. So when you look at the red willow, it produces a sugar-like crystal in the, in the spring. So this comes in sequin, sequin time, the, the season. Usually the crystal form from a sugary substance which steeps through the pores of the willow bark. The substance becomes hard once it's on the outer bark. So once you collect the red willow, scrape off the crystals and wrap, in, wrap them in a cloth bundle. So crystals are collected and stored in a large amount. Later, these crystals are pounded into a powdery s substance, okay? This produces a medicine used to soothing, teething pains for smaller infants and for other tooth and gum complications. The crystals are divided into smaller bundles, which are then moist in water, so warm water, and rubbed along the infected area of the gum and teeth. Usually, the rubbing will cause the child to um, have saliva, right? Sometimes a child will swallow the saliva, which allows the medical element to enter the internal uh, internal sub, sub, symptom um, system internal system. Sorry. Uh, usually, so uh, rubbing with the crystal bundles is repeated until the child shows improvement. So I'm gonna demonstrate on that. So once they scrape the crystals off the red willow, so it becomes hard and they, they make it soft and they put it in a small little bundle. So once, so this is the crystal, they put it in a cloth. So once they put it in the cloth, they go like that and you tie it up. And these bundles, um, it lasts for a long time. So once you use one, it could be used for the whole day. 
and it's required to do um, four to six hours because when your child is teething, the, the gums, and you can see the teeth, the tooth trying to come out, and it's so painful. Uh, you can see the child suffering. And not only that, when um, uh, so that's another indication that your child is sick from the teething, is that they, they tend to have diarrhea. So once this is dabbed in warm water, you're going to take the child's mouth and dab it all over inside, even the inside of the cheeks. So dab it warm, warm water with the bundle. And it's okay if um, they may not swallow right away, but with uh, the saliva buildup will make them swallow it. And then the medicine will go down and that would help them with their in internal uh, um, system for them to um, release the toxins. And uh, so this is a wonderful medicine instead of using that or a gel or giving them Tylenol here and there. So you have to believe in our medicines to also to work, okay? So our next herbal medicine, uh, remember, spruce gum. So spruce gum is a sticky substance which seeps off the tree, collecting on the outer bark, and, and, it, and it's hard, it hardens. Once it's on the outer bark, it changes to a dark brownish gray color. Later, the hardened gum can be chipped off and collected in large amounts. The hardened gum is placed in the pot or can where it's melted over a hot fire, which separates the gum from the unwanted uh, debris of the bark and the wood. When the gum is still hot, uh, lard or animal grease is added and the whole thing is mixed well. The mix is left to cool and to, so to, to cool in the shade area away from heat or warm sunlight. The medicine is used to it's an ointment to soothe scabs, itchiness, and open cuts and sores. And not only that, some of the, the actual will take it off the tree and just put a little bit in your mouth and don't swallow it, okay? Gives a lot of richness. Um, so we'll go into... Next one. Um, so ginger root. So I grew up on ginger root, and we call it wee guess. So wee guess is found in um, marshy areas where cattails and push, um, um, you know, those long, that looks like a drum, <laughs> a drum hand. <laughs> so that kind of plant around that area of the pond. Um, you go in and uh, you take out the root and the sense of smell is important here because the area where wheat gas grows is a strong street, uh, strong sweet odor it, it gives off. The root is used for medical purposes. It soothes toothaches also, headaches, stomach ulcers uh, in, in digestion, and stomach cramps. There are several ways to apply wheat gas. And we guess could also be chewed, okay? And then again, you don't swallow it. And so when you chew it on a toothache, or even when you have a cold, you just chew on that. And uh, we guess is also boiled. So when you um, get your little sticks, about two cups of water, boil, 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 until it comes into a dark um, um, broth. Take out your we guess and then drain it out, whatever debris was left put it in a warm um, container, and that could be used. You warm it up and use it as a, a coughing um, cold remedy also. Okay. 
Okay. So these are teachings that came from Irene Mus late Irene Muswagen from Guinness LCP. And these were passed on to my late teacher, Byron Apatagan. And I remember Byron Apatagan telling me uh, about his uh, late mother, uh, late grandmother, about these medicines. And I myself uh, came across with these medicines. And the other thing, too, uh, I have three daughters, and I breastfed all of them. And as they say, it's very important in the first couple of days of life when you breastfeed. Um, there's that the vitamins and the minerals. And once the milk starts to produce, milk is also used as a medicine where I had a friend of mine where she goes that uh, she her eyes were bothering her. It wasn't pink eye. So anyways, she goes, I need something to smooth the soothe in my eyes because she kept putting creams and that wasn't working for her. So you take a little bit, ask for some breast milk and take a couple drops on it and then just close your eyes because the, the breast milk has a lot of nutri nu nutrients and natural medicine because when you breastfeed your child, they're not sick. They, they no respiratory problems. They're not sick. They're full of energy. They'll eat um, um, the food. Uh, it just gives them more of a, a healthy um, balance. So anyways, my friend did that with the breast milk. So tutu sabway. So that's that tutu is the breast, sabway is the milk, um, where she put it in her eyes. And she goes, it was very smoothing. It was cooling. And then not even a couple days later, whatever she had in her eyes went away. So, you know, our natural medicines are very enriched that uh, it just gives us a sense of, of um, uh, to uh, have a good life that we need, good health that we have these in our backyard or ask a friend. And um, so medicines is very uh, important into, to our indigenous people. So medicines in Cree is uh, maskiki, maskiki, maskiki. Mm -hmm. The dress and the dance originates from a dream. The story of a jingle dress begins with a This little girl was very sick and who gave no signs of recovering. Her very worried Nothawi, Hopapawa, father, offered Sastamun and prayed for the Creator to guide him to help her get well. The gui guidance came to him in the dream, Pawatam. The father was shown how to create this dress and instruct about a dance that would accompany the dress. Um, dress, jingle dress guy, Donok. Then uh, Nothawi made the dress with cloth and cones like shaped sewn to the dress. Almost it's Nangan. Cone shaped it on one. When he was done, he went to put the dress on his very sick daughter, Odansa, Mittenegiago, so Odansa. Nothawi has instructed the daughter how to dance in the dress. Even though the daughter was very sick, she's somehow able to dance, and she danced. She became stronger and stronger. She danced and is relieved from her sickness to be healed. The cone-shaped bells created a beautiful sound when the dancer is moving. The spiritual power of the jingle dress gives energy from the sound of the cones that sing out to the spirits as a dance move in time with the drum. To this day, the jingle dress regalia and the dance, it's considered a healing dance. Hi, hi.
What is a powwow? A powwow is where the dancers who dance around the circle to the beat of the drum and display their style of dance. Dancers move in clockwise motion around the circle to follow the direction of the sun. So the sun in Cree, we call them call it bisim. So from there, there's two styles of powwow. We have traditional and contemporary. Traditional is where it's not a competition. So people come to a traditional powwow to have fun and to go at their own style and pace. And it's not, a, like I said, it's not a competition. So they're there to show their regalia and to make new friends and just um, celebrate life in general and make new friends at a traditional powwow. With contemporary, contempor contemporary has a lot of competition and there's a lot of um, modern moves of powwow that they came on their own of style of dance. So there's a lot of um, cartwheeling uh, backflips and really authentic dance moves to the beat of the drum and contemporary is very um, um, with money of course and then there's a lot of top um, prizes that they that they um, dance their hearts off, hearts for and going to contemporary um, powwow is uh, very energetic because like i said it's 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 a competition more than uh tradition like was it okay so a few rules of etiquette to follow during the powwow so when you go and see the powwows so there's rules that i would love for you guys to follow and so the first one the most important one okay so do enjoy yourself as you watch the dancers okay, very important because they will feed off the energy that you give them because the harder they dance the 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 drum gets faster and then the crowd will go wild and they feed off that so you're a part of the powwow to encourage the dancers to dance harder do feel free to join in the intertribal dances by invitation of the master of ceremonies so there's always going to be the one person uh, directing when and what who's dancing in the cat um, when the categories are coming and then the masters of ceremony will be the one that says all oh, dancers come in and they stop and they introduce the the specials or the categories and then they have a break and then they'll say uh, all intertribal and dance again if you hear the word intertribal and there's your um, um, time for you to participate in the intertribal as a non-dancer do ask permission before taking pictures of dancers as you know the regalias are very sacred some are passed on some are um, um, been blessed and and the most important one is do not touch the eagle feathers do not go approach and go like this like it's it you're gonna it, it kind of it, it's personal it's personal space so you're not allowed to touch anybody's regalia. And also with the jingle dress, I gotta watch with the little ones, they like to come up and go like this. And But uh, maybe at that moment, you could give the little ones a lesson and say, you know what, it's not okay to go up and touch other people's regalias, okay? Um, um, do visit the craftsmen and women and ask questions about their art and skills and that's another one where at a powwow amazing amazing artwork and crafts beading you name it and the food is awesome so don't be afraid to go around and explore around the powwow outside the arbor or even in the arena um, they have these um, concession stands or arts and crafts booths an amazing work of everybody that does uh, indigenous work and arts and crafts um, do not take pictures during the flag song honor dances competition or if the arena director asked for all cameras to be shut down so at the beginning of the grand entry it's called the flank song and the honor dances and competition during competition you can but flag song at the beginning 
and honor song is where um, we all stand up and we think about maybe someone that's passed on or they're doing a special at the beginning to honor the family. Um, do take off your hat respectfully. Um, and yeah, so taking pictures is a no, a no, no <laughs> on flag song and honor songs, okay? Occasionally there's a special or sacred moment in which photography is not allowed. Please respect your traditions, like what I just said on, on the first one. Please take and pick up your own litter and throw it in the trash, right? So you have to be respectful to honor your, the arbor or where the arena is. So indoor arena, as a matter, or out in the arbor, because you are, because you are dancing on Mother Earth. So you have to respect and pick up the litter. So don't make a mess. Don't throw stuff on the ground. Most of all, have fun. <clears throat> we. We work hard to make this an enjoyable time for you, make new friends and new renew old friendships. And that's just amazing where you make uh, new friends and they follow the, a lot of traditional families follow the powwow trail during the summer. And um, so they uh, reunite at, at a powwow. So a lot of family, traditional families go what is called a powwow trail. Um, do not touch the dancers or the regalia, right? Right there. Not only the feathers fragile, but are also considered sacred objects. So that's what I said prior before. So do not touch dancers regalia and the feathers are very fragile. Um, there probably is going to be at times where there are dancers uh, with the, like the plumes for the jingle dressers, the women traditional and the men with the bustles, that's all made, uh, that's all eagle feathers. So I came about on one powwow where one of the men's bustles of uh, one of the eagles fell off, the eagle feather fell off on the ground and the arena director that um, will have a stick only because to direct the, the, the dancers or where to go and to point uh, where the feather is and they stand there. So when the feather goes on the ground, they that's when they do an honor song and to uh, they get one of the drum groups to sing an honor song and just to make sure that eagle feather is, is sacred again and give it back to the dancer and it's it's all good from there. Um, do not sit on the chairs immediately at, around the arena. These are reserved for the dancers only. So when you go to a powwow, it's in the arena or in the arbor. So when you go around, you see that they're gonna see all the drum groups in the circle like this. So try not to sit too close by the drums because there is seating that's um, around it where you sit, but try do not sit close to the drum, okay? And there is some um, traditionals they call uh, the donate money and it's called blanket dance. So they, uh, sh the audience show its appreciation for the host. So blanket dance is where they have a blanket, like a star blanket and they go around and um, the spectators or whoever's there will, will donate a little bit of money. So maybe that money will go to a family in need or to build up for the next powwow. So that helps a lot. Um, and of course, there's no smoking in the building, but if you're outside the arbor, then again, respect the circle, go way behind. And then and the other one is no alcohol, beverages, or drugs allowed. So let's uh, keep it clean, go there sober, respect, and don't be afraid to dance in your tribal. And I hope this helps a lot when you go to a powwow, and don't be afraid to go to the powwow. Ecco sana.